Hi, my name's Drew and I'm going to be walking you through the Tiger Moth by Taxa Outdoors today. Uh, starting right up front here, we're going to go over how to load and unload. Uh, right up front here, we have your coupler. Now, the, as it sits here, this is going to be in the unlocked position. It has a, uh, an unlock hold back, which is really nice. Uh, so the train of thought with this whole process is going to be, uh, of course, unlocked coupler here. Uh, use your tongue jack here to jack the, the uh, coupler three inches above your ball and drop. Of course, center your ball and drop underneath the coupler. You're then going to go ahead and crank that down on top. Once that coupler is fully seated on that ball and this, this uh, wheel is starting to lift off the ground, uh, you can then slide this fully forward. Now what we're looking for when we are fully engaged is you have two vampire teeth here on either side of the frame and it is very important that we make sure both of those are resting flush and engaged there into the frame. So that's going to be completely locked on. Uh, from there you can continue to crank this up until that jack is fully up. Uh, at that point in time we're going to go ahead and remove this pin and remove this wheel. Uh, this wheel can store over up here in the toolbox, but it is only designed for when the unit is stationary. It does make it easy for you to unload or load and unload uh, and maneuver the unit around. Now your tow chains here are going to be crossed underneath the coupler. It is state law in Texas that these chains cannot make contact with the pavement at any time and they must be crossed again underneath the coupler. So they're going to be crossed like so. Uh, what you're doing is creating a nice basket for the coupler to land on. Uh, in the unfortunate event of an uncoupling situation. So with those cross there, uh, you're also going to have your emergency breakaway cable here. You're going to use a third connection point, so either a carabiner or a quick link on the uh, receiver of the vehicle, uh, and you're going to have three connection points, two for the tow chains, one for the emergency breakaway. You have your seven-way receptacle here. Now this is going to, uh, this is going to plug into the bumper of your vehicle. Uh, this is going to give you full function to your vehicle's charging system, braking system, uh, and tail lights and marker lights. Whenever this is hooked into the bumper of your vehicle, think of it at that point as one large vehicle. So, uh, Moving up here, we have a, this, this toolbox that I referenced here. This is uh, under lock and key, so uh, you can't keep your things uh, secure uh, with that. Uh, Full-size spare tire here right up front. Uh, Tire pressure and lug nuts is very important to talk uh, about specifically. Now these lug nuts have been torqued down to 100 foot-pounds here in our shop. Uh, manufacturer recommends a retorque procedure. So that retorque procedure is going to be 15, 25, 50, and 100 miles of initial travel. They want you to go ahead and stop and make sure you retorque those down. Uh, manufacturer further recommends that at the start of each trip, there on after that we do go ahead and make sure they are maintaining that 100 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, if you're questioning the tire pressure rating, that's going to be stamped on the sidewall of the tire as the max tire pressure rating. Uh, with all trailer tires, we do want to run those at the max. You can also look up here on the tongue for the tire pressure rating here. And these tires carry a 50 PSI max tire pressure rating. Uh, again, that's exactly where we want to run them. Uh, so here, uh, first up, we have a solar plug. Now this is a 12 volt solar plug. Uh, this is a direct connection to the battery. Uh, this is designed for portable solar panels. Uh, what that means for you is this essentially becomes a plug and play connection here. Uh, you of course plug in to this Anderson style plug uh, with your portable solar panel, those briefcase style folding panels, those could all be accommodated here. You then take your solar panel out into the sun, directionalize it as needed, and the built-in charge controller of the panel is gonna take in energy as necessary, and it's gonna cease to do so once that battery is full. Uh, really cool feature, it is pretty much like set and forget. Uh, below that we have your 30 amp 110 volt power connection here. Uh, if we go ahead and look here at the plug, uh, you have one L shaped prong there. Uh, you're going to go ahead and line that up with the other L shaped prong there, insert that fully. Uh, once you're fully inserted, you're going to give it an eighth inch turn to the right, that's going to lock it in. Then we do have this secondary collar here, we can screw down and lock it in further. It's going to be my recommendation for every single unit that I deliver that you're going to go ahead and add a surge protector in line. That surge protector is going to plug directly into the power source and then your cord into that. If you have any questions or need more information on uh, the, the importance of a surge protector or what surge protector to buy, uh, feel free to give our parts department a call. They would be more than happy to educate you uh, on that. So what we have here is your air conditioner cover. This is going to help protect the appliance from road debris and weather when you are traveling. 
Uh, of course, it's very important that it is in place when you're going down the, down the road. It is even more important that it is removed before use because if you, if you try and run your air conditioner with this in, it's gonna burn it up and actually ruin it. So uh, you're gonna start by unsnapping these. There's snaps all the way around uh, the sides here. We go ahead and we unsnap those and we can go ahead and slide that off. Again, store this wherever you feel necessary, uh, but the unit is then ready for use. So moving on here to the rear, uh, we have stabilizer jacks here on the rear. Now these are for stabilization, they're not for leveling. Uh, it's very important that we operate these correctly to keep them in tip top shape. Uh, what that means for you is you're going to want to make a habit of kind of operating these with a light touch. So we're going to uh, put this crank handle over the stud here and then we can go ahead and crank and we're going to, the idea being is that we're going to come down, we're going to make contact with the pavement and maybe a quarter turn more just to sure everything up. So it should look something like that. Once we've made contact, just stiffen everything up. Again, these are for stabilization. They're not for leveling. If we're going to be doing any leveling, we're going to use that main tongue jack up front. Leveling from left to right is going to be done with the tires and the leveling kit. Uh, also here on the rear, we have these water cans here. Uh, you're, of course, there is no freshwater holding tank on the unit, so you are going to be carrying your water with you. Uh, whether that be in this container or something else, uh, it is nice to have the brackets and the carrier built into the unit. Uh, here we have a drawer. I think the, the main purpose of this would be like an outside kitchen area. Uh, on the inside, you're going to find a camping stove. Uh, this would be an excellent location for that. But furthermore, uh, you do have storage uh, underneath each of these. Uh, probably easier to see from that angle. So you do have storage there as well as storage here on this one. And this is actually a cutting board kind of top so that for food prep and things like that, uh, it would be awesome for. And then it locks down by uh, just pulling up on those bungees and locking them down. Now there is a release here on my side. It's a little yellow handle um, on the actual slide. And of course the drawer, the, the drawer locks in the out position and to unlock it you just go ahead and press that down. Uh, once that's pressed down that's going to allow that to feed directly here into the unit. Uh, we have your bag awning here. Uh, we have, do not have the room to go ahead and pull that out for you in this position. If you have any questions they are very very straightforward and very simple to use. If you do have any questions or concerns with that please don't hesitate to give us a call. We can either direct you to a video uh, or help you again over the phone. Uh, moving on here, uh, we have the large side door as well. Uh, when it comes to really functions here on the outside, that, that's basically it. Uh, so we can really kind of open this thing up and, and kind of focus in on that. Um, now starting off, number one, uh, we have your tabletop here. Uh, it is in that setup position. It would need to be uh, removed and stowed away uh, to pull out that bed. So to do that, you're going to uh, first press this to release that tabletop. You're going to go ahead and wiggle that up. Now with that out of the way, we're again going to press this and this uh, will unscrew from there. So we can go ahead and get rid of that stuff. So of course it could stow underneath here with a lot of your other stuff, which will work just fine. And then you just very simply just go ahead and pull this out. Relocate this back cushion there, flip it over. And then you got the full bed area. Uh, so it is a nice, nice, easy way of setting that bed up. And then when we uh, go to put it back in, it is very straightforward and easy to do so. Uh, before going down the road, we do wanna make sure that we lash this down. That's gonna keep that from sliding over inadvertently again when you're going down the road. Um, now here on the inside, uh, all your windows are going to be the same. Now that's this window here on the, the, the wing that we have open as well as this rear window, uh, which they're go both going to have latches like so. So we unlatch them and then we go ahead and bring the window out and we tighten up the struts. Now on that bigger window, you're going to have struts on each side to tighten up. So tighten those up and then you can of course bring your, uh, have your privacy shade there or if you pull up from the bottom you have your screened window there. 
above my head here we have a, a light switch cluster uh, this first light that's going to be an out exterior light I believe so that's going to be a light here on the rear uh, you know like a porch light and then we have this this second switch is going to be for this LED light strip above my head and this light here is I believe an exterior light as well and then this one here is going to be for the red lights yep they're going to be for the red lights here so you have red lights here at the front and that one's going to be for the bright white LEDs here on this side so excuse the confusion there um, also here we have some safety equipment here you have a fire extinguisher here um, very important to test your safety equipment before going down the road uh, fire extinguisher does have a gauge here so you're going to make sure that you read that gauge make sure there's still pressure in it uh, you do have a 9 volt smoke alarm here uh, very similar to what you'd have in your house it is a, very important that we do test that uh, in, in terms of function uh, before going down the road so something we want to test every single time uh, here we have a 12 volt exhaust fan here uh, it does have this red on off switch here to open or close uh, of course it's going to be a pull down to close and it's going to be push up to open um, over here we have your uh, air conditioner uh, it is just a window air conditioner I find most people have, have used uh, one of these in the past uh, but you have a low fan low cool high cool high fan so either a, a standalone fan option or uh, actually conditioned air here then we have a thermostat here as well now you do have a filter with that that's going to be removable from this side here you may have to snake it around the cabinetry there um, to actually get it out uh, now up top here we have a carbon monoxide detector is also going to run on a 9 volt battery um, and it will also let you know when it needs to be replaced. We have a battery disconnect switch here. Now that is uh, to isolate the 12 volt system uh, specifically designed for periods of long term storage. So anytime you're storing the unit for long periods of time uh, to keep any nominal or phantom draws off of the system uh, you do want to put that in that auxiliary position. Uh, you do know that it is off when you are unplugged from shore power. If you look at that voltage meter there, it's going to not show anything. When it's on, it's going to actually show you voltage. In this case, it's showing 13.6. If I go ahead and, and open this up, that's going to be your converter and your fuse panel box. Uh, on the right there, we have your uh, replaceable automotive blade style fuses. On the left side, we have your uh, standard light switch style breakers uh, resettable here just like you have in your fuse panel box at home uh, not a bad idea to pick up a variety pack of 12 volt fuses keep them with the unit uh, in the event that one were to 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 burn out we have your uh, we have a couple USBs there uh, to charge any USB driven appliances and then we have a 12 volt cigarette lighter style receptacle there uh, as well as your voltage uh, your battery monitor there now you have storage underneath each of these each of these other bed pieces here so you got a ton of storage there a lot of your bits and bops are going to be under there your camping stove uh, your tent room here as well as your screens and the uh, accessories there for your Thule awning under this side we have your battery box so your battery is going to be inside here uh, and that is just going to remove these two thumb screws. Now what we have in there is going to be a lead acid battery. Uh, what that means for you is it does, is going to carry some maintenance. So two, two or three times a year, uh, we're going to go ahead and pull those vent panels up and we're going to be refilling with distilled water as necessary. So it's very important that we maintain that water line uh, and keep that uh, battery in tip top shape. Now if you are accessing this compartment, you can go ahead and use these conveniently placed uh, carabiners to actually keep those uh, open so you don't have to physically hold it there. Uh, that just about covers the Tiger Moth here so if you have any questions or concerns please don't hesitate to give us a call uh, we would be more than happy to walk you through some of this stuff over the phone or if you have further questions uh, just just please don't hesitate to give us a call. Thank you.